Charity. What does the word charity really mean to you? Can I please have a show of hands how many people in this room are giving to charity? Now put down your hand if that type of giving is in the form of money. Interesting, I also did the same research on social media and found that 78% of people believe that giving to charity is related to money. A natural assumption, some may say, as sadly in today's society, our success is defined by the number of zeros at the end of our bank account. But aside of our financial situation and our physical attributes, what makes us all unique? We each have a set of gifts, tools, learnt, created, developed, and some even given to us at birth. Take a moment and write down on a piece of paper the unique gift or tool that you have been fortunate enough to develop. Can you speak another language? Are you good in the kitchen? Are you good with financial figures? Whatever it may be, please write it down and keep it with you until the end of the talk. When I was 18 years of age, my grandfather passed away and left me some money and I decided to travel the world. I went to 28 countries in 11 months and Malawi was my first stop. After volunteering for six weeks, eating the local food and drinking water, I became seriously unwell. Rushed to a local hospital, they told me they needed to operate, but there was a high chance of me catching HIV. I was unconscious at the time and the friend I was with had to make the decision about whether I had the operation there or I travelled to a nearby private hospital but risked dying en route. He took the decision to find a villager with a car who drove me to the private hospital. I spent three weeks in the hospital and when he came to visit he said, Sarah, when we went to the local hospital there were maybe 200 Malawians waiting in the queue to be seen by the one doctor. When they saw you, they told you to go to the front. You with the doctor for two and a half hours. When we came out of the hospital, some of those people may have lost their lives. It was that moment that changed my life forever. The people of Malawi had given me their gifts of love and kindness. And I knew I had to do something to help. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I just knew I would come back and I would make a difference. It took me 18 years, nearly dying, and people risking their own lives for me to do something to help. Why are we waiting for something to affect us personally, or for a family member or a friend to deal with cancer or Alzheimer's before we start raising awareness? and doing something. If we could make a difference right here, right now, today, why wouldn't we? Ask any Syrian person 10 years ago if they'd expected to have to leave their beautiful country, leave their homes, schools, family members behind, all for the unknown, all for something out of their control. Our precious lives could be turned upside down any moment and we will be relying on other people to help us. We all have the willingness, the mindset, the tools to do something, but enough people are not doing anything about it. We are all falling victim to the can't do syndrome. That is the innate ability to find excuses for why we can't do something rather than why we can. To too much time, not our responsibility, someone else's problem, something else comes up. These are all excuses that we make. But it isn't our fault. Society allows us to let this happen unless we break the mould. But that doesn't make it right. We all find excuses for why we can't do something rather than why we can. Think about it. How many of you have said you're going to go to the gym and get fit? 
but never actually got round to it? How many of you have said you wanted to help someone, but never really found the time? This is the decision that we make in our current state, and for ease sake, I will call this the grey area. This is the area between interest in actually giving and actually doing something about it. Two very different things. It's the multi-million dollar question that all charities around the world want to know. What makes you go from thinking about helping to actually doing something about it? I can't stand here and say I know the ideal recipe of what is required to make you all feel my passion, to make you go out of this room today and go and do something to help the world. Some of you may have already identified what it is and are doing something about it. But for those of you who haven't, that could start right here, right now. I was once like all of you, getting on with my own life, donating to charity here and there. But after my experience in Malawi, I realised that I had to do something to help. I've spent the last seven years raising money, gaining experience from professionals, volunteering in different countries around the world, all so that I can create a community-based organisation in Malawi, the world's poorest country on GDP. The philanthropic organisation I have founded now directly supports 200 orphans and vulnerable children and indirectly 5,000 children providing food, education, medical care and life skills. I have seen the difference we have made with my own eyes. But has it been difficult? 100% yes. I have faced every single challenge imaginable. I have dealt with corruption firsthand. Imagine raising all of this money, every birthday asking for money, running a marathon, a triathlon, only to then go and find out that your money was being misused. I have been chased by witchcraft around a village. If you think nearly dying once in Malawi was enough of a reason to go back, I also nearly died twice from a nut allergy. I've had malaria, typhoid and dengue fever. I've resuscitated children who sadly aren't with us today. And I've turned away orphans who needed to be fed because we didn't have the funds available. People have asked me, is it really all worth it? I'd be lying if I stood here today and said that I haven't thought about returning to my high-flying PR job in Dubai. Living a life like a normal 26-year-old, socialising with friends, enjoying days off, playing sport. But I always remember my passion, my gift, my tool that has been given to me and the reason why I keep doing what I am today. So how are we going to make sure that you utilise your own tools, skills, to do something to make a difference? When you face a challenge, how are you going to overcome it? People have asked me how I managed to do it all, to give them advice, to tell them what makes me do what I do. I can't stand here again and tell you I know what it is. But what I can see is that I went through three different phases unintentionally to reach the point I am at now. The first is to identify. Identify what skill, gift or tool that you have that can be shared with somebody else. What knowledge do you have? Do you have first aid experience that you could create a video that could be shared with someone else? Are you good with accounting and you can help with figures to help another organisation who may need support? The first and most important, identify what it is. The second, belief. If you do not believe you can make a difference, why would we do it? Let me give you an example of my friend Gordon. Gordon lost his leg due to gangrene after he had retired and his hopes of playing on the golf course and enjoying the life he had worked so hard for looked further and further away. Unsure of what he was going to do, he didn't just want to sit around in a wheelchair and feel sorry for himself. So he identified a skill that he could do and he learnt to knit. When he heard about the work I was doing in Malawi, 
he decided to knit 200 hats for our children. I took the hats over to Malawi and you should have seen the smiles on the children's faces. This was the first gift that they had ever received. I couldn't wait to go home to show Gordon the picture, to show him the difference that he had made. When I went home and I gave the picture to his wife, she told me, sadly, that Gordon had passed away. I was devastated that I wasn't able to tell him how many lives he had changed. But you know what? His wife said to me, Sarah, for Gordon, it wasn't just about you taking the hat and making a difference. He found a skill, a purpose, and most of all, a reason to keep on living. Gordon identified what he could do. He believed it. And then most importantly, he actioned it. Belief without action is just a dream. And we can all do that, right? So why should we do something about it? Science shows us with evidence that the reward center in our brain is activated when we give back. And it improves our mental health our emotional well-being and makes us feel more positive. Giving to others helps us personally as well as professionally. There is evidence to show that when we help other people, we perform better at work. There is also a fact that we are living in a generation today that is the most advanced in terms of technology. We are exposed on a daily basis to the suffering that is going on around the world. Disease, crisis. We see it every single day on social media and it's now become the norm. And it doesn't mean that because it has become normal, we can now turn a blind eye. We have a social responsibility to take action. It does not make sense to me that 795 million people are starving in this world. That is one in nine on Earth. But yet we can send people to space. Where is the balance in that? So why are people not doing more to help? It's not just me that can see this unbalance. We all can. So why are we not doing something about it? Again, I conducted a social media poll and found out that the majority of people didn't want to give to charity because they were unsure of where their money was going. I completely understand. I've been on both sides of the coin. And now running my own non-profit organization, transparency is key to our success. So if you are going to give to charity in whatever capacity, make sure you do the research and invest intelligently. You wouldn't buy a house without looking into it. So do the same when giving to charity, do the research. The second reason was that people wanted to concentrate on themselves and their families. Of course, the obvious, we want to help ourselves and we want to help others, but we need to look at the bigger picture. What makes us all the same in this room? We are human and that will never change. We have a social responsibility to look after each other. I was born here today. Another child was born just the same as me in Malawi. She is no different to me. She just doesn't have the resources available, the voice that I have, the ability to make a difference. She was born into a different geographic location. But that doesn't make her any less of a person than I am. So we need to look together at the big picture in all of this, and that is philanthropy, the love of the human race. Yes, we concentrate on ourselves and our families, but we can also do something to help other people. The final thing was that people didn't believe they could make a difference. Take the ice bucket challenge as an example. That was one creative idea that went viral on social media and raised a hundred million dollars in a month and changed the face of a charity. One person who made a difference. Sharing your knowledge with a younger sibling so that they can pass an exam 
is making a difference. Sharing something about a cause on social media is making a difference. I, as one person, have helped with lots of different volunteers in Malawi to eliminate malnutrition from a group of 200 children in the last 12 months. We've made a difference. Take the example of Naomi. Naomi came to me at two years old with burns down her arms. Her mother had done this to her intentionally because they thought she could make more money on the streets from begging because people would feel sorry for her. Starving, with no home, she came to us and said she needed help. A friend of mine held a bake sale at home and shared it on social media. A friend of hers then shared the post again. This person then contacted me to say, Sarah, we want to help. She now sponsors Naomi to go to school and she has the right to an education because of what one person did. They made a difference. We are breaking the cycle of poverty. But where we could be and where we are is massively behind. Schools are introducing it into the curriculum and now the millennials of today know what it means to make a difference. University are looking for students to have volunteered or to have some form of experience where they're giving back. Companies around the world have corporate social responsibility inbuilt into their organisations where percentages of staff salaries are being sent to a good cause. Companies are even paying for people to go and volunteer in different projects. We have a wave of philanthropists and social entrepreneurs are taking society by storm. We are breaking the cycle, but not fast enough. We need to reboot the definition of success, whereby giving time, money, skills is embedded into every organisation around the world. We need to create a currency of goodwill, which is respected globally. I'm not saying we will see a difference overnight, but individually, if we all do something, then collectively, we can make a difference. I am no different to anybody else. I just had a passion and I just had a dream and I made it happen. Please take out that piece of paper and look at the skill that you wrote down earlier that could be shared. In less than 10 seconds, you will make a decision about whether you will take action. If that hasn't started already, then leave this room today and go out there and make a difference. In a hundred years time, our children will be around to see the footprints that you have left on this earth. We can make a difference together.